Hi, everyone. Welcome to this last session about error correction and fault tolerance. So our first talk will be Concatenate Codes Save Qubit by Satoshi Yoshida. Thank you for the introduction. Uh, so I'm Satoshi Yoshida, coming from the University of Tokyo. And uh, today I will talk about our recent work uh, about the fault tolerance quantum computation, and especially using the concatenate code to reduce the space overhead. So this is a joint work with Shiro Tamiya and Hayata Yamasaki. And the full paper of this work is you know, on archive here. So you can check this paper if you're interested in. Okay, so let me begin with the introduction of the, what is the whole trend quantum computation. So the aim of the whole trend quantum computation is to reduce the physical error, you know, occurring during the quantum computation. So if you have a, you know, so the task of the FTQC is like this. So given a precision epsilon and a given original circuit, the task is to perform the noisy circuit to simulate the you know, probability distribution of the original circuit within a you know, given a precision epsilon. Ah, sorry. And um, to this end, we can use a quantum error correction code to suppress the logical error rate arbitrarily. And um, the threshold theorem guarantees that if the physical error rate is below a certain value called a the threshold, then we can suppress the logical error rate to an arbitrary small number. And uh, by suppressing the logical error rate below the epsilon divided by the circuit size, we can achieve the task of the FTQC because you know, the obtained you know, uh, probability distribution will be uh, epsilon close to the original circuit. And in this kind of FTQC, we have basically two um, overhead. We need to pay some you know, uh, cost to you know, implement this FTQC. One is uh, space overhead, which is defined by an uh, increase of the number of physical qubits. And the other is called the time overhead, which is defined by the increase of the depth of the circuit. Okay. And conventionally, there are two conventional approaches to implement the FTQCs. One is based on the quantum LDPC code. And a typical example of a quantum LDPC code is a surface code. So this is defined like this surface patch. And um, we can suppress the logical error rate by increasing the distance, which is basically given by the patch size. So like uh, this, is, this describes the distance. And uh, by increasing the distance, we can suppress error like this. And another approach is based on the concatenate code. And uh, most you know, a famous example is a concatenate seven qubit code. And uh, in this concatenate code, we can basically concatenate you know, each, each code. Like, uh, so in, in the first one, we concatenate, you know, we encode this code with the seven qubit. And uh, then another level, like uh, we concatenate each, you know, each this qubit in this seven qubit code. And in this approach, we can suppress the logical error rate by increasing the concatenation level like this. But these two conventional approaches both have uh, uh, some obstacle in rearranging the FTQC, which is basically on the overhead problem. So uh, if you calculate the space overhead and or the time overhead of these approaches, then you know, it is given by this kind of polylog, you know, polylog with respect to the circuit size. And uh, what is the problem is that since it grows uh, polylog logarithmically, like uh, if we consider large scale quantum computation, this overhead goes to infinity. So this is the problem when we are in the FTQC. Okay. And uh, to circumvent this kind of you know, overhead problem, researchers have considered as constant overhead and you know, FTQC protocols based on two approaches. And uh, one approach is based on the quantum LDPC code. And in 20, 2014, Gottesman has shown that if you have a quantum LDPC code having a good code parameter, like uh, you know, uh, having a non-vanishing code rate, and uh, if this distance grows polynomially with respect to the circuit uh, code size, then we can construct a constant space overhead for trend protocol. So we can achieve this one to be constant. But the problem of this approach was that it needed a large time overhead. So like, uh, if you calculate the time overhead, then it goes polynomial, which is worse than the you know, conventional protocol. But recently, uh, this time overhead was improved to the polyrogalismic factor by this Tamiya Yamasaki Kwashi paper, which was presented by AQIS in the, you know, yeah, two weeks ago. Okay. And another approach is based on the concatenated quantum Hamming code. And uh, basically, this is based on the concatenated code. And, uh, 
what is good is that it achieves the constant space overhead, and also it also have a short time overhead. And uh, let me let me describe on the second approach. So the quantum, concurrent quantum Hamming code is a generalization of the concurrent seven qubit code. So instead of considering this seven qubit code, we consider the code family called the quantum Hamming code. And this quantum Hamming code is defined as a defined for a code parameter R. And if you increase the code parameter R, it will encode many logical qubits in one code size. So uh, if you calculate the physical qubits per logical qubit, this will approach to one. So by concatenating this quantum Hamming code, we can you know, uh, obtain the constant space overhead as follows. So uh, if you, okay, so first of all, for the concurrent seven qubit code, if you calculate the number of physical qubits per logical qubit, if you increase the concatenation level, it increases exponentially because of, you know, of course, like a, it, in each concatenation, you need to multiply seven, so it will exponentially grow. But uh, in this concurrent Hamming code, since this code, code rate goes, you know, goes to one in the infinite range, um, this uh, space overhead stays in a constant. So uh, in this way, by concurrent and quantum Hamming code at the going rate, we can construct a non-vanishing overall rate. Okay. So, okay, but to implement this kind of idea of FTQC in a realistic systems, we need to consider practical requirements for FTQCs. And um, of course, uh, like, uh, first of all, we need to reduce a, you know, a space overhead required to FTQC because uh, in general, like a number of you know, qubits you can use in the uh, experiment is limited. And also, um, you also need to have a high threshold code because you know, physical error rate is also uh, limited. And uh, we also need to consider about the modularity, how to compose a quantum code or like um, to con of course, like uh, you also need to have some some kind of quantitative comparison with many codes to get uh, uh, what is good or what is bad. Okay, but our previous work has lacked uh, some of the point of these requirements, and basically this work uh, solved these problems by suggesting that suggesting a high threshold and a low space overhead protocol. And we also have a quantitative comparison with the surface code, and we show that we can reduce the space overhead at the practical regime. Okay. So this is outline of this talk. Uh, first, I will talk about the background of this talk, and then I will show the main result of this talk, and then discussions. Okay. So let me compare the quantum Hamming code with the conventional protocol called the surface code first. The good point of the concurrent Hamming code is that it will achieve a, a constant space overhead, while surface code requires large space overhead. But um, kind of trade-off is that uh, this concurrent Hamming code have a very low threshold. And uh, from our numerical analysis, we show that this threshold is given by the order of 10 to the minus five, which is impossible in, in practice. So to improve the threshold, we consider the following code construction. So on the bottom of the, this concurrent Hamming code, we put another quantum code, which is called underlying code. And um, for instance, for physical error rate, say 0.1%, we can suppress error by using the following strategy. So first, we use this underlying code to suppress error 0.1% to the 10 to the minus five. And uh, after suppressing the logical error rate, we can use the concurrent Hamming code. So we can suppress this logical error rate more. So by using this idea, we put high threshold code on the bottom layer to improve the threshold. Okay. And uh, as a high threshold code, we use a C4 C6 code, which is defined as a concatenation of this 422 code with a 622 code, and uh, which is, you know, originally proposed by this new paper, very old paper. And the merit of this code is that it will achieve a very high threshold, which is given by like a 2.4%. 2, 2 While in our analysis, uh, like in the same setting, we also evaluate the threshold for the surface code, which is given by 0.3%. So which is very, very better than the you know, surface code. And the reason why it achieved a high threshold is that on the parallelizability on its you know, encoding circuit, 
So this is, these are the encoding circuits for the fourth to code and the sixth to code. And as you see from this efficient circuit construction, like, a, okay, so it is very efficient to implement double, so like a, it will achieve, so it, it only has very small error allocation to be, you know, happen, so like a, it will achieve very nice threshold. Okay, so this was the background of this work, and now we will show the main results of this work in the next slide. So in our uh, work, we constructed the you know, quantum code by following, the, by following this guiding principle. So we consider concurrent code, and on the underlying code, we put the high threshold code. And on the higher level code, uh, we put the code with few, fewer qubits, qubits. And of course, like uh, this threshold and the space overhead are in the relation of the trade-off. So we need to somehow optimize uh, to, to like, uh, have a balancing between these two factors. So uh, after optimization, we obtain the following code construction. So on the underlying code, we put the C4C6 code, which achieved high threshold but which may contain many qubits. On the higher level code, we put a concurrent quantum humming code, which achieve a very uh, small space overhead. So this is the whole structure of our construction. So like uh, up to level four, we use a C4C code. And uh, you know, on the higher level, we use a quantum humming code like this. And uh, we show the performance comparison of our protocol with the surface code. So we first compare the space overhead of our protocol at the physical error rate to be 0.1%, which is kind of yeah, natural setting. And uh, we show, so uh, this graph shows uh, you know, a space overhead for surface code, which is showing green, and uh, our protocol, which is showing orange. And uh, from this graph, it shows a saving of a space overhead uh, you know, uh, in this way. And, uh, and uh, the remark is that here we evaluate the space overhead to be the number of logical qubits per physical qubit for each code block. Okay. And then we also compare the threshold of our protocol with the surface code. So basically the threshold of our protocol is determined by the threshold of the underlying code, which is the c 4 c code. And a formal numerical calculation under the circuit level noise, evaluating the logical C0 error rate, we obtain the threshold of our protocol to be 2.4%, while the surface code will achieve 0.3%. So in this sense, we constructed a higher threshold and a lower space overhead protocol than the surface code. And uh, one remark here is that our protocol requires O2 connectivity in its construction. And uh, so like, uh, we consider that you know, this kind of protocol is suitable for neutral atoms or ion traps or optics, which allows long range uh, interactions. And uh, we also optimize the underlying code for each uh, physical error rate, because you know, in reality, we have various settings of the experimental setting, so we need to optimize for each you know, settings. So uh, the you know, general principle of our code construction is like this. So if you have this physical error rate, we first use the underlying code to suppress the logical error rate to a certain value, which we call just a p-target, uh, which, which should be below the threshold of the concurrent Hamming code. So uh, we, we you know, consider the space overhead required to achieve the, uh, this logical error rate P target for various codes uh, shown like this. And we, have, and we compared for each physical error rate, like for different value of the er physical error rate. And as you see from these tables, uh, the optimal code you can use for different physical error rate can be different code. So by changing underlying code, we can optimize the space overhead for each physical error rate in this way. Okay, so let me quickly uh, show the detail of the protocol, which is optimized to you know, achieve this, uh, optimized to, uh, to reduce the space overhead. So, uh, so basically, uh, when, when you know, in Fortran quantum computation, you need to implement the Fortran gate operation. And uh, this kind of gate operation is implemented by combining gate gadget with error correction gadget. And as an error correction gadget, we use a new error correction gadget, which is basically based on the teleportation. 
And this left figure uh, shows the conventional protocol, which uses the auxiliary qubit in parallel, like this. And we also utilize the optimized circuit of the new SCARJET, which uses uh, you know, uh, this you know, auxiliary qubit in sequence. Um, um, the good point of the conventional protocol is that since it's, you know, uh, it's in parallel, it has less errors. So we use this conventional protocol to the underlying code, while uh, we also need to have a protocol with fewer qubits on the higher level. So we use this modified circuit for the higher level concurrent humming code. And uh, we also use a similar strategy for the initial state preparation as well. So, but uh, you know, a basic you know, uh, principle is the same. Okay. And uh, for the decoder, we just use a very basic decoder, which is called a hard decision decoder. So since it's a concatenation, concurrent code, we can concurrent level by level, basically. So uh, if you get the measurement outcome, we first decode this you know, measurement outcome as an underlying code, which is a 422 code. And uh, after, you know, and then we collect the decoded qubit information, and uh, we, you know, uh, decode the collected data as a 622 code, and uh, we pass it through to the, you know, higher level code, 713 code, and we decode it, and, uh, and so on. And uh, we can proceed uh, this, in this way to the highest level. Okay. And um, to evaluate the logical signal error rate, we conducted the uh, following, you know, following circuit in a, in a simulation. So basically this circuit uh, like evaluates the entanglement fidelity of the logical CNOT error, uh, sorry, logical, logical CNOT operation. And um, to implement this logical CNOT operation, for C4, C6, or humming code, we, con we use a transversal CNOT plus news error correction gadget, as I explained before. And for the surface code, we consider that we implement it by the, using the lattice surgery. And basically, the idea of the lattice surgery to implement the logical C note is from this you know, circuit decomposition. So like, uh, you know, uh, uh, it, every C note gate can be decomposed into this kind of power measurement. And uh, we can implement each power measurement by a lattice surgery, basically. And uh, we evaluate the logical C note error by evaluating uh, this identity error by memory experiment and uh, this power measurement by stability experiment. So in this way, we have a quantitative comparison of our protocol with the surface code at the same error conditions. Okay, and uh, let me, uh, finally, let me have uh, some discussions about this protocol. Uh, first of all, I will describe the difference of our protocol with the contact LDPC code. And I think the most different part is on the modularity. Uh, so, so here I just show uh, like a surface code patch. And uh, in, in the typical, okay, in the contact ATPC code, you need to encode uh, uh, like a physical qubit to a logical qubit, but uh, you need to encode to a larger, very large code at once. While in the concurrent, concurrent code, since we have this kind of structure of concatenation, it has some kind of abstraction layers. So like uh, we, can, we can first you know, uh, like a, um, encode the physical qubit to this code, and then you know, collecting the logical qubit, and then encode the next level, and the next level, and so on. So in a sense, it has a similar structure to the IC chip like this. So like it has kind of uh, layer you know, structure. So this might make uh, the implementation more easy in a sense that you, know, you can just pay some finite effort to each, you know, uh, to constructing each, each code. Okay. Um, okay. And uh, I will for explain about some future works of this work. So first of all, like, uh, we evaluate the space overhead in our analysis by just evaluating the number of physical qubits per number of logical qubits in code block. And we didn't care about the auxiliary qubit in our analysis, but of course, in a FT, to conduct the FTQC, you need to care about, it's like a, you need to use some auxiliary qubit to conduct the you know, full trend operation. So for instance, in the new scudget, if you use the auxiliary qubit in parallel like this, you need to pay a you know, cost of you know, three factor here. So, uh, so for more practical reasons, 
uh, we need to also optimize this kind of factors uh, at once. And also, like uh, in our analysis, we just consider the most basic you know, error model called the depolarizing error model. But um, uh, some, some research has shown that if you, if you switch the error model, then sometimes results can be different. So like uh, the good code in this error model can be a bad code in other error model. So the natural question in this position is that do we still have an advantage over the surface code, including octal qubits or on other error models? And now we are investigating these questions and uh, we will update the archive paper soon. Okay, so let me summarize our, my talk. So in that, uh, in that work, we constructed a concurrent code by combining the C4 C3 code having a high threshold code with a quantum Hamming code having a low space overhead. And by using this concatenation idea, we constructed a low space overhead, high threshold code, which is better than the surface code. And we have also shown that uh, this underlying code can be optimized for each physical error rate to achieve a better space overhead in each settings. Okay. So this is a take home of, of this talk. Concurrent code, save qubits. Thank you for listening. Thank you very much for the very nice talk. Um, does anyone have questions? Hello, thank you very uh, much for the nice talk. Um, in the middle, you compared transversal C0 in your code with lattice surgery based um, surface code C0. Is there a reason why you didn't consider transversal C0 on the surface code? Mm -hmm. Uh, the reason why we consider that this surgery is just uh, it's a conventional protocol. Of course, like, uh, you can also construct, consider the transversal C0 gate in the you know, uh, surface code case. But uh, you know, many, you know, um, like, uh, many previous work have considered the lattice surgery as a conventional protocol. So like, uh, we somehow wanted to compare our protocol with the conventional one. So that's why we took the lattice surgery. OK, thank you. Other questions? Then I, I have one. I really like how this work was, yeah, exploiting the, taking advantage of the diversity of the different codes that, that exist. Um, are there any disadvantage to concatenating them? For example, in terms of, you briefly mentioned that in terms of connectivity, it seems that it's, it's natural, but are there disadvantage? Uh... Well, yes, so as far as I know, so uh, basically the connectivity is, you know, main advantage of a protocol. And uh, um, like, um, mm, for instance, like uh, we, mm, for the decoder, we can use a very simple decoder for the concatenation, so it's not a matter. So we don't, yeah, as far as I know, like uh, we don't see a very clear advantage of a protocol other than the connectivity. Okay. Yeah. And for the noise model, you consider that the noise is independent for every qubit. Do you have intuition on what happens when the noise is um, like locally around um, target many close qubits? And... Uh, you mean like an error occurring at the locally? Like you consider locally stochastic noise? Mm -hmm. uh, so, okay, so uh, it is known that our protocol can have a threshold under this kind of local stochastic noise model. Uh, but uh, we didn't consider a specific error model in our numerical simulation, so we don't know what we have changed. Okay. Yeah. 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 And then, if there's no other question, we can thank our speaker again. Thank you very much.